the, the site from Dover here because it's near to the river so that our people who travelled on that river like our Tupuna Apakura because she used to travel this area <coughs> trading with our people along the bank and she would catch food like um, eels and manu because this whole area was covered in bush and trees like the Kahik Tear Stand that you have out there because there are also quite a few um, Tōtara and Kauri but not too much mainly Kahik here in this area and it ran right down to Kiki because this was our area for um, catching birds and at certain times of the year we would um, leave it alone so that the birds could nest and bring up their babies. The Reverend Ashwell arrived in 1839, um, persuaded some of them living there to assist in forming a mission station. So he gathered together a group of newly converted Christian Māori people and he set up this papakainga is the word rather than pa which it means a village more than anything, doesn't it? Think about it as a village, not a pa. There were whare, there were about 200 people living right here, so they wouldn't have been clustered on this little area. But all of this, there were no roads, no houses, it was open area. So they would have had their whare around this area. And they were the core people that were there when John Morgan arrived and set up his mission station in 1841. So they were already here. Now we've got here that Awamutu means the end of the river. Now that is correct, is it Jenny? We've got that all right. So the end of the river means that, as I have always been taught this and understand that this is so, that this was where the deep water ran out, basically. There was a bridge over here, and where we've got the Mooty Street Bridge, that's still the Mangahoe. So this car site, Papakainga, probably covered most of that down to the river. The canoes would go to there and then the water was shallower from there on up as we've seen. During the land wars, the people were moved out and it became a redoubt for the military. So here we've got, they probably used some of the existing fari to stay in. And here's a photo of the redoubt which was on the site. There are redoubt sites scattered all around town, and this was one of them. Now we've arrived at the site of the old mission house, and if you look at the ground here, all we have left is the footprint. Um, it was demolished in 1939, I think it says on the board, in the 30s. Um, and looking at it, it doesn't look huge, does it? But this building was um, accommodated uh, up to a hundred or more students. They had grew wheat, they had sheep for meat and for wool, and they were all taught to spin. They had a blacksmith smithy. They were taught to chewing horses and looking after horses, gardening, growing potatoes. And so they were self-sufficient, they had to be, there were no shops to run to to buy a loaf of bread or, or a pound of potatoes for your dinner, they had to be self-sufficient. So if you picture all these people, numbers fluctuated a bit, but living in this space, there's a carved wall on the end of the College Marae and there is a, a carving there representing John Morgan and it's got John Morgan and a little dog with a sack tied around its neck and the story is that John Morgan used to go walking all around with his dog and he had the sack with grass seed in it and holes in the bottom of the sack so as it walked around it would sow the grass seed and if you look at this big tree here the chestnut tree that was actually planted by John Morgan I don't know about that one but that one was and what I want to do is uh, talk about um, Apakura Introduce her to you. Apakura was a woman, and and so um, our tribe was named after her. So uh, I'm from that tribe of Apakura. My ancestors live around here. Um, 
and they had some dealings with Morgan and all the missionaries that settled here. And they also taught them uh, how to grow things. Uh, and, and so because they had all the land, um, they took to it very quickly. And uh, I read a piece in the paper where it said that they had 300 acres of wheat and wheat at that stage was more valuable than the gold rush that they were having during that time. And so um, once they grew all their produce and that, they took them up to Auckland for the settlers. Mm. And uh, basically they were the uh, people with the resources who were able to do that. And so Kafia started a trade over me as well. And at some stage, uh, the ones who were uh, looking at uh, uh, exporting flax, they had flax there. And so that was a business type thing for them. Now, what happened? I think uh, we all know what happened. The land was started. And if you have a look at other countries, how that starts, uh, then you find that the people of the land are the casualties for me. Um, my, my ancestors um, immigrated back to Kafia because that's where the rest of their people were. And then, of course, uh, I suppose uh, the land there got too small, and so some of them came back here and then they then settled further around the island in the Manukoto country. This is not the first church of, uh, that was built. There was, pre, pre that, as it tells you here, there was a Raupo church which was further over. And when we go back over there, there is the board by the eyesight on that area where the seats are, which has got photographs of the early church. It was a very large Raupo chapel and it had these windows. Now these windows, I actually find this quite mind-boggling. Jenny tells me it was the sort of thing that was done. They were brought here, carried from Tauranga. There are about seven or so of those mullioned windows. And they were carried from Tauranga across the Kaimais on a trail by, by 14 Maori bearers. And they carried them on their backs. Got them here unscathed, unbroken. Now to me that is just huge. I find that just so astounding that they, they and that's the sort of thing that they did. There, was, there wasn't a truck to carry them in, there was no river to bring them down, so they got them on their backs and carried them here. They were in the first chapel, which blew down, so it, had a, it was Raupo, so it was not going to last forever. And when Morgan arrived, he decided they must have a church, so he raised the money for this church and the church out at St Paul's at Rangiafia Road at Hyrene, which is the same plan, only just a little bit smaller, and it was opened the year after this one. Now, both those churches, and I hope you can hear me over the whole time, both those churches are still in use today. 1854 wooden churches. They are two of the oldest wooden churches in existence and still in use in this country. All the timber that this church was built out of was tree, were trees that were felled at Rangiatia and Hyrene, um, Matai and Hart Rimu. Um, this window here, there are various stories about this, that the legend is that it was gifted by Queen Victoria, but in everything I have read, it came from St John's in Auckland. It was a gift from St John's Theological College, which was set up very in the very early days. Maybe Queen Victoria gifted to them, I do not know. But it has been here a long time too. And if, 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 when, you, when you get up to move around, you're welcome to walk around. There's a photo of John Morgan there. There are various plaques around the walls. There are um, grave markers from the land wars that you will see. If you look up on the roof, there are footprints. There's all sorts of ideas about how those footprints got up there. But someone walked on them with bare feet when they were building. They put that up and they're there for all time. Our chiefs, they petitioned a lot of the 
um, ministers to come this way. And I know that our people, especially for Rangiofia, had to raise the money to build those churches. And in doing that, they also had to build the churches. And actually, nowhere in the history did it say that. It, it's a little bit of a, a discussion, I suppose, yes. on about the churches and the land that was given to them by our people, and that's still being discussed today. However, that's a different story. Yes. Today we are working on something that's good in bringing our people together. And I hope that we shared a little bit of our history with you today as well.